All right, we got another time machine reaction with Chibi talking about episode three of ReZero. Let's get it. What is up, my fellow Chibits? Today, Jesus, that's an aggressive poster of Holo right there. Hey, I'm here to bring all of you once again another anime review on oh boy. ReZero. Oh boy. I'm actually surprised. Yeah. I'm very, very surprised. About? That Subaru was able to overcome Elsa or AKA the Bow Hunter. Well, he got bailed out, right? Subaru did overcome it, but majority of the work was Reinhardt clutching for us, so... Subaru did make that opportunity happen, though. I'll give him that credit. Survive this day and finally move on. I am completely surprised that he did not die in this episode. So, apparently this series is not going to have, like, the, you know, same day constantly being repeated. It's probably going to carry on. Well, you don't know, right? Right now, the, the first arc, that was a pretty good run, right? A couple fails here and there, but we're just getting started. But, like, I could totally see us just being hard stuck. Just, like, multiple iterations, just completely hard stuck and being, like, el in, stuck in elo hell. On, and he, most likely something else is going to happen. He's going to reset. I'm very curious exactly how far his power will reset back. Will it be, like, every given day? For instance, let's say when a day passes and nothing happens, will he be reset a day backwards, or will he be re reset all the way to the beginning again? Oh, because obviously the checkpoint stuff, right? And instead of, you know, being spawned at yeah, Roosevelt's mansion, would it be the Oppa guy? And now I think that we know that that is not the case. I'm very curious about this, but I'm going to say right now, this episode, one thing I noticed, and I believe that I'm not going to be the only one to notice this, because it, you have to, honestly, you would have to be a little bit blind not to notice it. <laughs> I gotta notice what? be honest here. What? Because the animation. Yeah was insane the animation yeah. was absolutely ridiculous in this episode was it if we compare it to like 2024 ufotable standards i love reinhardt versus elsa the fight scene was absolutely stunning but is it the peak animation that i've ever seen it's definitely up there but i don't think it's like the best right Studio White Fox, you have to- It was 2016? Okay, then let's compare 2016 Ufotable anime, and I'd still probably side with Ufotable because simply, it's just the studio diff, right? They got the fucking fake Grand Order fucking- <laughs> They got the FGO hookup money so that can just pour into Ufotable anime, so it, it's unfair, but I did think that the episode itself, like, every- Episodes 1, 2, 3, everything has been stunning. 2016 anime, I don't think it's even that far behind. Eight years ago, yeah, but still, Compared to some of the animes that I'm watching right now, the quality of the anime is fantastic. I would argue that the quality of the animes were better on average in the past than now. Obviously, it's due to the sheer number of garbage that they're pumping out in order to meet the bottom line. But yeah, fantastic animation. Did yourself in this episode. Like, you really outdid yourself. Speed White Fox makes some really good episodes and they have some really good art style and animation usually with their anime they make. But damn, this episode was on point. You see Reinhardt down in the middle of the room and Elsa's just running above him on a floor up. The animation that scene, the way the camera was panning and turning around. Yes, the, like the 360, Elsa's running all the way around, Reinhardt in the middle swinging the sword, absolutely stunning. Round. That was some impressive stuff I never expected to see from this series. I mean, if there's one thing I can give this episode, if I could only say one thing, that animation was leaps and bounds better than a lot of stuff I've seen from this anime season. And there's some good stuff from this season, especially when it comes like to animation. Like what? My Hero Academia? But this right here, this episode surprised me. If I, we already seen something like this, I can't wait to actually see how future episodes are going to be. Maybe the final episode of the series. So yeah, animation though, camera angles, everything. Just the production team, the staff, everybody that was working on this episode really was... Hot take? I think that... Talking about animation quality is filler content and reviews. I'm gonna say it right now. Who the fuck gives a fuck about the production value unless we're criticizing the downfall of some episodes? Talk about the anime. Talk about the significance of the Battle Hunter and what a sword saint means. Talk about how the blade, you know, kind of seemingly just like dodged around Reinhardt. Talk about like the 
what the meaning of felt like. I, I'm sorry. I think a lot of reviewers back in the day, I'm, I'm not trying to shit on streaming right now, but like I, I noticed that a lot of people just like glaze the animation and they pad watch time. On point, they put their heads in the game and they really went down. My whole channel is filler content. Explain yourself, Santiago Israel. Right now, I just talked about how a reviewer's job, and I think that if you're talking about the exact like, production value during the review of an episode, rather than talking about the contents of the episode, I think that's kind of filler. Tell me how me as a reaction channel, everything is filler content. Give me the logic right now, Santiago. Give it to me right now. You have 10 seconds to say something before I ban your ass. Let's have a conversation. Come on. You're getting scared? I'm here to have a meaningful conversation if you're coming into this with an actual gen like a, like a genuine interest in a conversation. If you're just here to hate, I'll just ban your monkey ass, but let me know. Come on. Any message, type it right now. Come on. I'm waiting. I will count down from 10. I'll just ban you then. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I gave you a chance. I wanted to have an actual conversation. But if you're just going to be a fucking hater for no reason, then there's no point for you to be here. Goodbye. That whole countdown right up there, that shit straight up. I should be... <laughs> now, nah, I don't know. <laughs> I probably shouldn't corrupt your minds. I probably shouldn't corrupt your minds about... <laughs> what a countdown. Hey, let's just continue, okay? So just... I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that some girls pay gate this content. Okay? Some girls... Some, most, a lot of guys pay money for girls to count down the numbers, so I'll leave it at that. ...and made this episode as good as they possibly could, and for a good reason, too, because this episode was the first time we get to see actual progression with the days. For instance, yep. the character didn't die. This was actually kind of a good win, like a happy end for him, which is what he said in this episode. So, backing up a little bit and talking about, like, the main point of this episode... What is it? It pretty much has it to where... Our MC, Subaru, he tries his hardest to make sure he could save everyone. And I honestly thought the old man was going to die. Me too. I really thought he was I thought Romji was cooked, and I'm like, oh my god, are you serious? But thank god there's healing involved. He's dead. When he got sliced in the back of the front of the neck, I thought he was going to die. But he actually lived. And then when something happened, I thought Subaru, when he got sliced, I kind of sensed he got sliced when he was acting like that. But I thought he was going to die then and everything was going to reset even though he made it to a happy end. So I'm kind of surprised he kind of survived this. But still, the overall way he acted to protect everybody, he kind of sucked it up. He was being a man. He wasn't acting like a coward. And then on top of that, he didn't choose the easy way out. For sure. I think the last one, Elsa made the point of like, you're such a pussy right now. If you weren't, you know, shocked in your uh, lack of ability to do anything, you know, Romji and Felt going in one by one, maybe they wouldn't have died, right? So that was like a nice little lesson that maybe we learned and tried to, you know, become brave this time. Maybe it was like also anger that was, you know, uh, making Subaru act that way because of how angry he felt of Elsa killing him. It was like a mixture of like scary and scared and bunch of emotion when he met her again, right? Or maybe it's just a pride. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna always try to relate how Subaru is prideful. Like, I will all, at every given point, if Subaru does something, I'll always have in the back of my mind that pride thing and try to relate it to that. Makes me happy to have him as an MC. Because there's a lot of series or writers that will have a story like this, where a character could die over and over again, come back, and then redo things over. And I've seen cases like this in other manga and anime, in literature and stuff. I've seen cases to where a character is in a situation where he's constantly having to repeat the same thing over and over, so he's willing to just take the easy way out. He's like, oh, I'm going to lose this anyways, just kill me, I and mean, he allows himself to die. And there was a moment like that in this episode to where Subaru could have died. You know, like, yeah. he, he was thinking... At the very end, too. Like, dude, I thought that we were going to get reset. I thought the whole thing was trolled and we're going to have to get Reinhardt back again. But thank God we can heal it. About, like, I guess I'm going to have to die here and everything's going to reset. But he's like, no, no, no. I can't do that. I got to fight for with this. I don't want to feel that pain again. And he goes all out to try. Yeah, and that I don't want to feel that pain again. Remember the terror of dying part? I think a lot of people 
that maybe even watching ReZero for the first time with me are making complaints that like this power is busted and it is busted. If you can just abuse return by death without having any sort of psychological consequences, then of course you can just fucking metagain this shit without feeling anything. But that's the part. He can feel things. And I think they're slowly going to go more into the inner psyches of how much he's actually terrified to use the power as each death becomes more and more painful. I to do what he's been doing, trying to save, you know, everyone else. And so I like how the MC didn't choose the uh, easy way out. He went all the way in yep. and he tried to get shit done. So this episode goes... Also, right now, so far, at this rate, I think I'll, I don't know. We're going to have to let Subaru cook. But if we're going to consider, like, the character of Rudeus versus Subaru right now, we'll let him cook. By the end of season two, I'll give you, like, my, my, like, my, who do I like more between Subaru and Rudeus? Because I hear that Subaru is going to be an actual, like, a lot of people are warning me, be like, listen, bro, in the future, like, there's going to be some really cringe moments. So just, just. Just be open-minded about the main character of the show and, you know. So I'm like, all right, I'll let him cook. But so far, Subaru's just being a Giga Chad. Up till episode 3 content, bro? He is just a Giga of the Giga Chad. He is the most Giga of the Giga's Chads. Like, and I don't know how he does it. It's the pride, maybe. ...up in points just for that alone. Now, besides that, with the end of the episode, we kind of find out that our main female character... The half elf, her actual name is Amelia. Yeah. And it's apparently not the uh, jealous Satella. witch that she. Not jealous witch, witch of envy. Subtitles getting fucked up is something that many people are very upset about, right? It's like, no, she's not the jealous witch. You need to say envy because it's seven deadly sins. That's what probably your people are probably angry about, right? Also, fun fact jealous and envy are not the same thing. Let's do jealous versus envy right now. I'll read you the definitions. Jealousy and envy both involve a feeling of desire for what another person has. But the difference is, jealousy is usually thought to be more negative. It often involves resentment towards the other person. Envy is also a negative feeling. Whoa, 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 whoa. So it sounds like, no, 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 no. There's, not something, there's a distinction between what that actually means. Right? Jealousy and envy has some situational overlap. For example, let's say another man seduces my wife. <laughs> She's attracted to him now. I think the man is amazing. Everything I'm not. I've become obsessed with this perfection. I'm jealous because I want to keep my wife. I'm also envious because I want what he has. What the fuck is this Reddit post? These overlap situations are common enough that people start to use jealous to mean envious. What, what, do, you, what do you say? <laughs> is this a real life scenario? What the fuck was that shit? I always fall back to the Simpsons when it comes to jealousy versus envy. Lisa Simpson. Dad, you shouldn't be jealous of Apu. Remember, it's all about the music. Homer says, I'm not jealous, I'm envious. Jealous is when you worry someone will take what you have. Envy is what someone else has. What I feel is envy. That's right there. You listen to that? This is what I was looking for. I never actually, I also don't never memorize it. Basically, jealousy is when you worry that someone's going to take what you have, okay? Someone is going to take your girlfriends. Someone's going to take your wives. That's when you're jealous. Okay? Because you're taking something. But envy is wanting someone has. Right? You never had that. But you want something that the other person has. That's the envy. So this is not a jealous witch. This is an envious witch. It's a witch of envy. That, that fucking wife example was fucking... Where did that come from, bro? What the fuck? She was calling herself in a couple episodes back in the first episode, but apparently her name is Millie. Now, I don't know exactly if that is true or not. There is a likely possibility that Amelia is the fake name and the jealous witch name might be the real name. We have there is a lot of, you know, overlap in, you know, you know, who Amelia and Satella is, right? Both half elves, both silver hair. But Amelia is Amelia and we know nothing about her family. She has no family name that we know so far. And all we know is that Puck is with her, and Roswell is backing her. What is Satella envious of? I don't know. I, all I know, all, all, all we know of Satella is that she's a taboo. And something bad happened in the past. That's, that's pretty much it. No idea, but whatever the case may be, 
I still love this episode. I love the setup. I love Reinhardt as a character. And I have a lot of questions yes. too. Like this episode really brings up a lot of questions. Like Yeah, the felt stuff with Reinhardt, but now we know that what Reinhardt saw was the insignia glow in Felt 10, meaning that she's another chosen candidate for the throne. Therefore, Reinhardt's backing her just like how Roswell's backing Emilia. Okay, so why was Reinhardt getting so like upset or why was he getting so serious at the end? Because Reinhardt's a lolicon, carefully vetting to see if Felt has any family members that could track him down, and also making sure that she is illegal underage. And when he saw the insignia, you know, what's gonna happen to our MC? I mean, is the Battle Hunter gonna remove, like, come back and kill everybody? I mean, I am down for Elsa to return anytime she wants, but based on the openings, it seems like she's gonna return in season two. Maybe she's gonna come back in season one as well. I'm totally down for that. I'm very curious where it's gonna go. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day. Or Thank you so much for your thoughts eight years ago, Chibi. Guys, please go to the video, sub to the channel, like the video if you haven't. And I will see y'all on episode four review.